Hey everybody, it's Art Weston. What I wanted to show tonight was a little bit more detail on how the digital force gauge setup uh, operates and a more kind of close up example of how the line testing procedure goes. So uh, with that in mind, I've chosen a high visibility, um, fairly thick line, uh, so it's easy to see in the video. This is suffix key lime IGFA, uh, rated at 130 pounds, at least that's the advertised rating. And companies that stipulate IGFA on their lines uh, will traditionally break, hopefully at that line class or below, to stay within the IGFA standards. Uh, note that uh, doesn't mean that that line is officially certified and that you're protected um, or guaranteed that that line would break within those class limits because the IGFA will always test the, an actual sample um, from your reel uh, from the time at which you have caught uh, the fish uh, in question. And uh, there's no guarantee that that line um, will actually test the way that it is described. But IGFA uh, stamped lines, I think, give you at least a better uh, level of comfort uh, than you would have otherwise had. Um, if you want even more confidence, you can actually send in a sample to the IGFA for a small fee and they will test it on their sophisticated machines and give you a better um, level of comfort uh, that you're using line that's within the range of expectations that you have. So with all, all that being said, um, I expect that this 130, 130 pound class line to break in the 120s, this is a what I'm calling a dry sample. Um, the IGFA likes to soak their line for about two hours before they test it to simulate kind of real world fishing conditions because with monofilament and copolymer and fluorocarbon to a degree, um, fishing line will absorb water, which tends to actually weaken uh, the line slightly. Um, so they want to make sure that their readings are as close to the scenario in which you caught the fish as possible. Um, so um, this uh, style of line, I actually did um, send a sample in from this specific spool to the IGFA and they rated it around 119 pounds. Um, so well underneath the 130 pound um, class level. So that should give any angler a reasonable amount of confidence that uh, um, it will be within the IGFA maximum. Now, because um, this sample is dry, I have not soaked this for the two hours. Uh, I expect it should break in the um, low 120s, maybe 124, 125, somewhere around there. Um, but let's see how it sets up and uh, we'll do the test. So. The way this works is these are called bollards and each one of these has a little finger vise and I start uh, the sample by screwing in the uh, one end of the line uh, in that top finger vise and then I do six turns, two, three, four, five, and six. And then I make sure there's no line that's overlapping. It's kind of a clean little spool there. And then I go down and start the bottom one the same way, two, three, four, five, and six. And then I hand vise that off, give it a double check there. Um, trying to find the scissors that I have, uh, but we'll forget about that for the moment. Don't have to cut that off. And we'll zero out the gauge and we'll start the test. One thing that you'll notice right away is that the stretch in this copolymer uh, is quite a bit. Um, I haven't compared it necessarily to monofilament or fluorocarbon, but it stretches a lot. And the absolute distance of line traveled under pressure increases as the line strength increases. Um, I want to see at some point whether or not the the weight at which um, the line is under pressure does the same distance or not. Um, anyway, I'm going to pause for a second. We're getting close. 115. And I know the video might just miss this and I'll change the orientation in a second, but we're at 125. So 125.6. A little bit higher than I guessed, uh, given that it's a dry sample, but um, close, but still well within the 
130 pound uh, range for IGFA standards. So that's basically how the digital force gauge works. I'm using a Mark 10 Series 2 M2200, which is class to handle weights uh, up to 200 pounds. So I picked that specifically to be within the IGFA range of uh, the 130-ish pound um, lines. Um, and then uh, it's a hand crank machine. The IGFA has a motorized one. Their system is very sophisticated. Uh, you know, it's tens of thousands of dollars. This is nowhere close to that level of expense. Um, one thing that's really interesting is that <laughs> these little bollards, um, these two bollards are more than the gauge itself and the um, stand is more than the gauge itself. So it's actually the accessories that, that make this um, uh, thing a, a little bit expensive, but um, I'm pretty interested in this stuff. So uh, I like to uh, purchase it and uh, I'm having a lot of fun with it as you guys can tell. So that's how the digital force gauge operates. Uh, thank you guys.